The topics and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio or its employees or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Welcome back, everyone, to the Geeks, Geezers, and Googleization Show, the home of Googleization Nation, where we talk with HR and business thought leaders about the crazy shift going on in the world of business, technology, and HR. Here's your host, Ira Wolf, and co host, Keith Campagna. Happy New Year, Googleization Nation, and welcome to 2020. We're excited to be back on the air after a three week hiatus, um, podcast holiday break. Uh, we got another all-star lineup coming up for you uh, today and in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're starting off today with uh, Milos Kovic. Uh, he's joining us all the way from the Czech Republic. Uh, Milos is kind of the perfect guy, Keith, mm-hmm. uh, to kick off the year. Um, you know, every I, I think every post on LinkedIn and, and my emails is filled with uh, we're talking about transformation of HR. Yep. This is the year, 2020. Uh, but uh, we've been doing that for I've been in business 25 years. Yeah. You've been in business not quite uh, as long, but yeah. and it seems that that's your everybody's resolution this year. Everybody's talking about it. Uh, unfortunately, change in this space uh, mm-hmm. happens at a snail space, uh, and the world, however, as you as every as the listeners know, and you certainly do, uh, is transforming exponentially. Uh, so, um, so you know, you often hear too. It, it shouldn't take a rocket scientist to make this to, to make this change, but. Maybe it does. Sometimes we, it does take a rocket scientist. And we scientist. got an honest-to-goodness rocket scientist <laughs> on the show today. So hopefully he'll be able to uh, spur us and, and yeah. help everyone else into uh, talking about uh, making this change. And But what he's going to be talking about is, and it's, again, another great timely topic because the other topic that's on here, not only about, human, uh, about transformation, uh, is about AIs and taking our jobs and mm-hmm. how it's, you know, skill gaps. Um, and uh, Milos is going to be talking about maximizing human potential in the age of Googleization and innovation, or Googleization, technology and innovation. Right. Same thing. Googleization, yeah. <laughs> uh, we got to thank again. Uh, we're glad to have Zor.ai back yeah. as our sponsor. Yeah. Um, so really appreciate them being here. Uh, Success Performance Solutions, too. And uh, working on a couple others. So hopefully in the next week or two, I'm, yeah. I, I, I hopefully we're going to be able to add Yep. Uh, new sponsor. Um, been talking to uh, a company and can't reveal who they are yet. But, uh, <laughs> it's there. Uh, so Keith, uh, it's been three weeks. Uh, yeah. We've been we've been certainly busy and you yep. know family stuff, holiday yep. stuff, uh, business. Um, uh, the general consensus is there's a couple people. I talked to somebody yesterday in a group I'm in, and they were on a 19 day cruise. And it's like, and they totally. She says, "Oh, I got like three weeks of emails to check." Yeah. For me, and for a lot of other people, and probably like yourself, it was like with the holiday in the middle of the week. Yep. Uh, it sort of just ran through, um, mm-hmm. and um, but was really busy. Uh, I, I literally got a call from one of our client, not a call, but an email, one of our clients, Christmas Eve. It's like, hey, I know this is last minute. Don't even know if you're around, but we're really on a time crunch, and and we need we we're looking at this is like a a, a top. Uh, a top person right. yeah. and we need to get an assessment out to him. Can you do it? Right. And you know, I'm always checking emails and stuff. So I don't know how I'd go away for, for 19, 19 days, days and check out. I mean, I've obviously I got Allison and, and other people to help, yeah. but it'd be quite different. Um, so tell me about yours. You so, know, it's, it's wild to think that, you know, it's pretty over a decade since the, the iPhone came out. And so, you know, a lot of conversations I've been having with people is like the 10 year experiment, that first 10 years is over. And you, you see yeah, the way, way over. <laughs> well, but the way people, people react, you know, I've, you know, with regards to l- putting the phone down and putting technology aside, it's, it, it I really think that's going to play a key role in people's capacity to manage the change that comes because it's, it's so much easier to like punch out of life and focus on work anymore. There, it's really starting. Life work, like the integration part, is starting to freak me out a little bit because it really is. There are now full generations that don't know the difference. 
They well, no, exactly. And I know that's one of Milos's topics. We're, we're going to talk about that, about yeah. mindfulness. And, and, and he has a great story that I just started to read a little bit yep. uh, that, yep. he, that he shared about his kids and, and things. So, yeah, no, you're absolutely correct. But so just, just to put things into perspective, iPhone's actually been out 13 years. The tablet oh, has been out 10. Oh, that's so, right. yeah. So it's twenty twenty. Right, right, right. right, right, right. 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 So, uh, I had oh eight in my head for some reason. Yeah. So that's so it's been around. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And but you got all these smart apps, and now it's measuring our our health and our wellness yeah. and your know, prediction. Um. And I've been talking about this for two years. Uh. And it was not from my research, but based on Gardner and Forrester and a couple other places. You know that by twenty twenty. Like fifty percent of all search was going to be, be voice, voice generated, sure. and now it's twenty twenty. And I must have gotten three emails just this morning about new new ways to use voice activated. Yep. And we got um, we had a, an old Alexa that wasn't working. I actually cut it off. But for the holiday, Jerry had got me uh, a new. Uh, actually, we have a show, so we do the video, and I go, ah, "What do I need? Another display? You know, <laughs> right, like right. one more distraction?" And it's. It's really cool Is it? because you walk by and it, it's like you see it and it's, and it's very affordable. Um, and, you know, I got the, the echo set. I, I got to yeah. get out of the box you know, yeah. down here. But it's so many things can get connected to it. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, you know, not only not only distractions, but they, they help. Right. You know, and it's gotten to that point where, you know, what we have to remember and know, um, which will I'll be interested to hear Milos's perspective on this, but you know it's like I st- and there's a box out there, you know, <laughs> in our in our area, in, the in storage our storage room? area, yeah. That um, I'm I'm sure there's a a set of encyclopedias, <laughs> and, and I remember growing up, or maybe we did get finally rid of them, but I remember growing up and, you know, the big deal was, I mean, I remember sitting in our living room and the, mm-hmm. and the world book, you know, we had somebody from world book encyclopedia and somebody from um, Britannica. Right. It's like, which one do you go with? What was the better deal? Do you get, which cover do you get? Do you get the gold, you know, the, right. and then you, then you get a subscription, like once a year, you got like, you know, 1968, right. like right, everything right, that right. happened last year. Right. Now it's like, oh, just go look it up. You don't have to know that, but you have to know how to apply it, right? Which, which is really changing. Right. Which goes to what you were saying is that it it's not what we getting the information is easy now. Yeah, it's it's taking yeah. it to that next level and applying it. But still, there's so many people that love the process, and I'm not saying that the process of learning is bad, right. but that process of sitting in a class or doing the training or, or it's like, oh, I, I'm, I'm going to take six months to learn this skill. And I go, right. well, everything you learn could be found in 30 seconds. Yep. What you have to do is learn how to apply it. And that's really the point, right? That's, that's where a lot of my focus has been. It's this idea of technology has changed so fast. We humans we haven't been able to change and so, and we have to change habits or stress comes and stress comes. So it's one of those things where it's amazing to think that, you know, one of the taglines I like is that the health of any organization is inherently related to the health of the organisms inside of that organization. And look around, companies are stressed, they're, they're making change and people need to be capable of making change, be creative, be innovative. And so many topics in there. Yeah. And, and that's what we're going to be talking about. Yeah. The year. And it's so, the beginning of the year. So we're going to start out. We're going to start out with uh, Milos in just a minute or two here. Um, we're going to talk about how can we maximize our human potential. So yep. that's that's key. Yep. Uh, next week, we've got Charlene Lee. Uh, and I interviewed her on the live stream. Uh, Charlene's um, been an analyst uh, for years, technology analyst, business analyst. Uh, and her new book is uh, The Disruption Mindset. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal book. Highly recommend that. But she's. She's going to be on the show yeah. next week, and we're talking about that. And and really, any company, anybody personally or or as a as a business owner, uh, executive, if you want to grow uh, professionally or personally, you're going to have to disrupt what you're doing, oh, not yeah. just transform, not make minor changes. Yep. It's going to be disruptive. So she's going to be on. And then we got Dave I Bookbinder like yep. the following week. I and, then we got, and then we got Jason uh, Averbook. Averbook, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've got, uh, we're going to have a ton. Hey, he owes me a call. Him yeah. and I were supposed to well, connect. And then you know, we, you may we have lost, be talking yeah, in two weeks to today. bust his chops on <laughs> in a two, little bit. Or three right. weeks today. Right, right, right. Um, so we got a quick, quick couple of announcements before, before we go. Uh, anybody who's been following me uh, on uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, social media, um, who has subscribed to anything I've done, uh, Googleization Nation 
is launched. We got to put, we mm-hmm. said, how do we kind of get a collective community and, and make sure everybody gets updates because uh, just uh, in the first uh, 15 days of this month, they've got three live streams. Actually, I got a fourth. Debbie Levitt I don't know. is, is Debbie, doing mine. I mean, so oh, I'm great. going to be on her show. I said I don't have enough time to prepare, but right, right. she says, "Hey, can we talk? Can we talk about something?" And and so we're going to do that. So I've got she four live great. streams, two podcasts, a um, bunch of articles going out, and, and that. On top of that, my my uh, yep. second edition of my book uh, should be out. Uh, it's actually we started to take orders. Yep. So if you join Googleization Nation uh, dot com. Uh, you have you can get a free copy. Uh, the first thousand people that order it, it's it's a free copy of the second edition. And if you're in talent acquisition, you or you run a talent acquisition team, you should be getting this book and making it mandatory reading. Yeah, thank. Yeah. And that's not a. I mean, I guess it's a plug, but that's from yeah. when I was selling talent acquisition software. Yeah, you your, were. Your, your were book my... was spot on in terms yeah, of what needs to still, happen. And it's still getting there. So it's been updated. Absolutely. I mean, it's, a, it's a revision. A lot of it, a lot of it's still relevant. That's Very how I relevant. tried to read it. Oh, yeah. But uh, there's five new chapters in it. Oh, Actually, yeah. six new chapters. So I'm going to have to email. So it's not just a re-release. To, do I have to email? Yeah. <laughs> No, we'll Find get you one. So, but you, you should be you should be part of this to, to keep track of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I got the, so the free books out. Oh, uh, recruiting in the age of Googleization, Learning Hub. Uh, yeah. We got about twenty students in there. Um, running a couple of promotions on there, so uh, you can uh, if you're part of Googleization Nation, you'll get the uh, the, the super extra discount. Yep. Um, let's see, free book I already talked about, and then live streams. Uh, just to give you a heads up on the future schedule, schedule in case we don't have enough time. Yesterday I did one. Yep. Uh, Enrique. Uh, yep. Rick uh, doing amazing. He they incredible. went from six chapters to eighty just in the U.S. and then he's got all these international chapters. He's, he's looking at two hundred at some major events. Uh, so uh, if you go up to my LinkedIn feed, uh, it's on YouTube, Mine it's on as Facebook. Well, sure. um, you'll you'll be able to listen to it. Uh, we had a great time. Milos is on today. Next Monday, I've got Jean Meister, um, big. Uh, she's a founder she's, of Future Workplace. Isn't she uh, like one of the most innovative HR people she of the is. year? Yeah, I'm so I can't wait to talk to her. Yeah. So she, we're doing that Monday at 11. Again, live stream, uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, we're talking about the 2020 workplace insights into using H A I for HR. Uh, Tuesday. Oh boy. I've got Kevin Grossman. Uh, president of the talent board. He was on the show actually the same time last year. Yeah. Uh, he launched us. Uh, they just uh, launched over the holidays, 2019, bench, their benchmark study. Yeah, sure. Canon experience. Biggest takeaway I have talent board is people. that despite all the stuff that we're doing, last year, candidate resentment Group. increased 40% sure. in the U.S., yeah. in, in North America. Yep. For, it went up 40%. And all we've been talking about is improving the candidate yeah. experience, and candidate resentment went up 40%. And that just goes to show you how distant, you know, and it's, uh, let me say it this way. What I've learned is that it's not a distance that HR has from actually knowing what's going on. It's the fact that they're so burdened. Oh, there's, they just yeah, can't yeah. figure it out, they and that's the transformation that fits yeah. in. And then, uh, I mean, the he's, he's going to be joined by Jerry Crispin, who's Jerry's also the one of the fans. And he's, uh, he's these are probably two of the most respected leaders right, in, right. in our they're industry. Great. So excited about that! And then next Wednesday, I mentioned we got Charlene. So that's just in the first two You're weeks. You're incredible, so, dude. Yeah. So uh, we I'm we got a lot tired going. Thinking about it. So um, Milos, we're going to be really tired uh, <laughs> talking to to our rocket scientist right, Milos right, right. Uh, Kovic. Um, you want to give a little background? On, yeah, on Milos sure. Here? So Milos and I met uh, online several months ago uh, as it relates to one of my blogs for LifeWork Integration. And he's got a fantastic story. I don't want to take too much from him, but think of your think of being a, a literal, a rocket science, an aeronautical engineer, global in your project management, you know, working with some of the best minds on Earth and, and realizing that there's more to life than a career. And simply taking the personal time, per, personal development, and then realizing that he found a passion in developing others so that they could find their passion. And then, uh, you know, he, he told me the story where he essentially walks into his boss and says, I want to do something besides rocket science. And, and, and I'll let him tell the story. But now, you know, fast forward just a, a, a year or so. And here we have Milos on the on the line. Welcome to the show, dude. He's the chief mind innovator or innovation mind uh, leader. Milos, are you there? Hey, hi, Keith. Hello, everybody. How you doing, pal? Hey, hey welcome to the show. So Thank tell you. us, uh, first of all, let's start out. What's your title? What do you do? 
<laughs> well, uh, it's not so easy to explain. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I can do pretty much everything, but sometimes I say that my specialty is to make possible from impossible. Uh, uh, but back to your today topic, is we are starting New Year and uh, New Year's resolutions, and uh, you mentioned rock and science and technology. Uh, actually, this uh, understanding difference why technology is developed was one of those trigger points on my career uh, when I started to thinking about how our mind really impacts development of technology. So it, it was sometimes, I don't know, around 2012, that was moment of my time when I, I was living in the United States and I was technical leader for development of avionics for a completely new business jet airplanes. So I had in my team people from India, China, United States and the Czech Republic. So it was kind of career what I would say, even in that moment of my time, it's really dream come true. I, airplanes were always my passion. Uh, you know, I had already family, two, be two beautiful kids uh, from the financial perspective it was also quite okay and living in the united states working with the modern technology so everything was perfect but actually uh, because of this uh, leadership role and different people from different different cultures in my team there were many situations where i was just wondering what is their inspiration motivation why in some cases somebody can do uh, assignment very fast and another person with similar level of knowledge and experience it takes like forever so i started to uh, kind of looking around for answers and also another thing what was happening in my personal life in that moment with my small kids uh, in that moment uh, older one had like around three years old and another one like uh, almost two years old and we were living in the united states and I was really kind of surprised how fast they learned English language. I would say that in six months, they learned English language better than me in 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> so those were kind of two of uh, big questions in my life in that moment. And everything just turned out uh, really from the unexpected perspective, because I started looking on the Internet for answers, typically Google. Uh, so and I found uh, area of personal development. And during the Christmas time, uh, I just ended in the bookstore. And in the bookstore, there was a book title was something like uh, Don't Touch This Book. <laughs> so it, <laughs> that, that, that was interesting. So, uh, of course, uh, my curiosity was triggered enough. So I opened this book. And in this book was uh, pretty much one sentence what I still remember today. And this sentence was saying that Sedona Town in the United States is kind of spiritual center. So I was living in Phoenix, which is like 90 minutes drive from Sedona. I have been in Sedona several times, a really beautiful pictures, beautiful nature, but never found anything about spirituality in the Sedona. And during my childhood, actually, this spirituality was also my another passion. So that was the moment when I started to kind of even reading more, attending different seminars, talking with uh, additional people. And in one moment, in one seminar with uh, one person who became a little bit later my mentor, uh, he was explaining uh, about goals, about different types of goals what we have in our life. And with one type of goal, which is driven really by passion, by something what we really want, he said an example that he said that you never change your kitchen by painting outside of your house. And then I was just thinking that, wait a moment. <laughs> if I compare this with aerospace technology, I am working with airplanes. Yes, of course, we have beautiful di digital technology. But actually, those physical principles are pretty much the same for 50 years. Right. So that's I started wondering, well, why is that? And so, so it was kind of my trigger point that I started to realize that whatever I am doing is kind of like uh, really best modern technology or something is hidden somewhere. And then he was starting talking about paradigms, about human potential. And he really said that our perspective, whatever we think is possible in our life is really 
shaped based on our belief system, based on our programming, what we observe from our surroundings. But he said that even just a moment when you have a new idea, it means that this idea is kind of a living creature. And it means that you are already capable to make this idea uh, in your physical world. You may not have enough knowledge. You may need some additional help from somebody else. But because you have this idea, then you are able to make it a reality. So it was really about those belief systems. And then I started to compare everything with uh, my team. And then I realized that these belief systems, these uh, cultural differences are really making a big difference. And sooner or later, I saw uh, with some additional practice and experiments that really playing with belief systems of people is really key and understanding what they really want, what they even don't believe that they are able to do. But in science fiction's world, they would like to be part of. Right. So that, that, that were kind of trigger moments where I started thinking, wow, that's something different. So what was it? So talking about belief systems, you, you got me in. You got my attention here um, because uh, I actually wrote a book. Uh, uh, one of my one, my first book uh, was understand. Well, it was, it was in construction, but it was understanding business values and motivators. And it was based on a, uh, a model by Edward Spranger. And it looked at uh, six values that people have and based on belief systems. And the belief systems were, you know, a passion for learning, passion for aesthetics and balance, uh, money, power, community and tradition. Mm -hmm. And and again, it's those are that's how we view life. That's how we see the world. And so we can all be talking about the same thing. We can talk. We can talk about ROI, return on investment. Uh, We can talk about a career. But some people pursue the career because they're passionate about it's a learning opportunity. Some need the money. Some it's, it's a it allows them to um, go up the career ladder. Some it, it allows them to give back. So there's all these things. So you got my attention there. So you've made this transformation. Mm-hmm. Where did you start? I mean, what was your belief system that you had and what did you learn? And, you know, where, how would you frame it today? What, mm-hmm. what changed? Well, there are even a uh, moment when I moved to the aerospace career. I was before working in the telecommunication area and I finished uh, in telecommunication study during my university time. Uh, I would say from in that moment, from unknown reason, whatever I tried or even started to think about to change in my life, it was somehow like with no effort, it just happened. And uh, in one of those uh, seminars, uh, my mentor started talking about law of attraction. And that when I really connected those events and understanding my mindset, what was in that right moment, that was the point where where I saw, well, yeah, whatever he's talking is explaining whatever happened in my life before. And that's one of the places where I find so much more opportunity out there in the business environment. You know, the idea that we've gone generations uh, with employees and, and not really considering them as people. And now here we are 2020, the talent marketplace has shifted the power and a bunch of companies don't have the understanding to develop their employees. And I think it's, it's programs like the one that you're, you're leading that really will give a true competitive advantage as, you know, as we move through 2020 and beyond, because with the, 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 I can't help but think Ira, with all the change going on with technology and the, just the pressures of growing business, how are companies going to do it if they don't take care of their people? Exactly. You know, and, and, there's, and, and there's this whole make-believe concept that healthcare benefits is a thing that companies really care about. But really, for the most part, they want their employees to have benefits because they know they'll lose them if they don't. And it's always been a cost item. You know, the CFOs that I've had, you know, and I've been doing it for a while now, most of them look at it as their number two expense. And it's not a matter of enhancing their employees. It's a matter of mitigating risk and lowering costs. So, and again, we got some great people that are coming up too and and, and in line with this topic. So Uh, we're just going to go down this rabbit hole. But we've talked about uh, digital transformation, buzzword, big big out there. Uh, Mm -hmm. We've talked about, uh, you know, HR technology. We talk about AI and automation. Uh, We talk about all these affecting us. But the other one is 
is this is the year of employee experience. Yep. Uh, everybody's talking. Josh Burson's talking about it. Um, I'm trying to think who. Ava uh, Book. Yeah, uh, uh, Jason. Yeah, he just wrote a big article. On it. I mean, number one trend is going to be employee experience. Yep. The employee experience is going to be about designing, you know, using technology. Let's design it. People get better access. Uh, talking with Debbie Levitt, you yep. know, who, who's, uh, you know, focused on u- user experience, more designing it. Uh, you know, she talks She talks about, you know, how that's got to be a focus. And ultimately, though, it's not none of this is like, let's throw more gadgets. Let's make it easier for people. But it doesn't. Right. They're not aligned with their purpose. Right. And, and it goes back. I, I love that, Milos, uh, about uh, remodeling your kitchen by doing the, ex, you know, painting the yeah, exterior. Nice. Um, I, I wish I, I knew that before. Because <laughs> a couple of years ago, we remodeled the kitchen and it was you know, like every remodeling a kitchen. It's a disaster. Right, 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 <laughs> you know, right. the house is almost unlivable for, a month. you know, well, they tell you it's going to be two months and six months later, you're still putting <laughs> stuff back together. It would have been much easier to paint the outside of the house. <laughs> uh, well, it wouldn't have changed anything, but that would have been, uh, and that would have been really interesting because we have siding on it. Um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so, hey, um, well, it, as I said, it, it's going to go fast. Uh, we're, we're, you're listening to Geek Skeezers and Googleization. We're talking with uh, Milos Kovac uh, at uh, Book is Breakthrough. We didn't even get to that yeah, yet. We didn't even but get we've to been the talking point. about maximizing uh, human potential uh, in the age of technology innovation. Um, so we're going to take a short break, uh, about a two-minute break, so stay tuned. Uh, we will be right back, and we are going to continue this conversation. We're going to talk about breakthrough. We're going to talk about what it means to people looking for a new career opportunity. Uh, we're going to talk about what it looks uh, to companies that are truly going to transform that employee experience. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. <music> Imagine how your company would grow if your candidate experience earned a 99% approval rating. Well, to get to 99%, you need the three best letters in recruitment technology, XOR. Zor's text bots, chat bots, and audio bots increased IKEA's candidate conversion rate 455%. Zor decreases candidate drop-off rates, improves your candidate experience, and collects analytics for future strategies. To learn more, check out Zor.ai. It's X-O-R dot A-I. Hi, everyone. This is Ira Wolf, author of Recruiting in the Age of Googleization. I'm excited to announce that my online course, Recruitment Marketing for the Accidental Recruiter, is open for business. This course is the culmination of a two-year-long project and releases recruiting tips I've learned after hundreds of hours of research, speaking with thousands of conference attendees, and interviews with dozens of experts. It's all available to you in Recruitment Marketing for the Accidental Recruiter. To receive more information or get started, visit our website at www.successperformancesolutions.com and click on the tab, Recruitment Marketing for the Accidental Recruiter. Hey, welcome back, everyone, to the Geek Skeezers and Googleization show, our first show of the year. We had a great start uh, for the first session. We're talking with Milos Kovac, uh, from uh, actually author of Breakthrough, uh, book we're talking about maximizing human potential in this age of uh, I call it Googleization, but mm-hmm. technology and innovation. Um, we had uh, we're, we kind of led up and we're talking about belief systems and how uh, what a remarkable shift uh, going from a rocket an aeronautics engineer, a rocket scientist yep. uh, to being a, a coach uh, teaching human potential yeah. uh, with that. And uh, Keith, you had a, a, yeah. a leading question yeah. you wanted to go. It's a, it's, a, it's a fascinating story. And I think in this era of technology, there's also this rebirth of human uh, awakening so to speak, you certainly see the market of spirituality is is booming these days. But you know, it, in terms of business, Milos, how can you know you have a great story because you work for one of the Fortune 100 companies. It's global in capacity, over 100,000 employees. How does somebody with your kind of credentials get the opportunity? to just walk in and change change what you're doing? Like if somebody's out there and you've maybe you're a business leader and you're trying to figure out how to empower your employees, or maybe you're trying to figure out how to get millennials to- well, I think there's two sides to this question. There's, One is, how do you do it as an individual? Because right. a lot of people that are struggling. And then the other part is, you know, where could a business leader, whether it's an owner of a business or an executive, whether it's CHRO, CEO, whatever, how could they, uh, what changes do they need to make uh, to make this happen and help their employees? So, mm-hmm. Yes. 
so actually, uh, one of the buzzwords or buzz topics today is inclusion and di- diversity. Pretty mm-hmm. much, upper, I would say, in every big companies. Uh, from my perspective, it's not uh, only about uh, balance between the men and women uh, in the in the workforce, but it's really about uh, different perspectives, different paradigms, or feel let employee to feel that they are really included in the company decisions in the whatever this company is doing and one of those probably breakthrough moments what i was successful to make with my current boss was that i started talking with him about his engineers and basically his engineers in his team were pretty much uh, the same experience as i had in the past and what he admitted to me was that yes we have really good technical knowledge, but actually we don't really know what we do from the relationships perspectives, what we really do from the leadership perspectives, like human to human interaction. And mm-hmm. so that was the breakthrough moment when he started to be curious about uh, what I did like in my free time outside of uh, my uh, regular engineering uh, job. So we started to talk in, and so I applied for the management position with a vision to let's bring some different ideas to the team. And one of my first discussions where I, I just basically asked people three questions. That was pretty much my first interaction. First question is, tell me everything what you would like to, if, if you live in the ideal world and you can have everything, what you would like to experience in your life? What kind of experience do you want to have? Don't think about whatever is possible or impossible in that company. This is not the question right now. Just tell me what you would like to experience. And one of the first reactions was, uh, do you mean what I want or do you mean what I dream of? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and, and I asked him why he's thinking that that's difference. He said, because whatever I dream, I don't think that it's possible. And that was immediately triggered for me about belief system. So we started to talking more. And that was for me what I, once I learned what his dream is about, just give him possibilities, what he can do just uh, to move forward towards his dream with this particular company. Second question, what I was asking that, okay, now imagine that, okay, this is everything what you would, would like to experience in your life. What do you think you need to learn from whatever you can say today? in order to move forward. And then they started to thinking about, okay, what I would like to learn. That's kind of a little bit breaking of the belief system that, okay, if I have, if I can learn everything, anything, no limitation about money, time, and so on, what, what, what I would do? And the third question is, uh, imagine that you already experienced everything, learned everything. How you would like to uh, pass your experience and knowledge to the, to the next generation. Because this is, you know, feedback from other people, how you help them to fulfill their dreams. It's, that's what makes us really happy. So those were th- this kind of three uh, breakthrough questions where those people started talking about their dreams, not about limitations, what they have in their company, not about what they think it's possible in that company or not possible. That was not the question at all. I said, let's talk about dreams then we can start talking how to make it. So, yes. So that's awesome. And I know you and I know each other well enough to know that you know why I think that's awesome. But if I'm running a business, right, what 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 was the outcome of that? Or maybe, not to get too specific, but how, does the, how do those questions mm-hmm. help generate the kind of positive energy that move a company, help a company break its habits so that they could evolve and innovate? Mm-hmm. Uh, let me share one example with one person. He was a project engineer in that moment of time, but it was quite uh, easy to see that uh, this is like not the best thing for him. He would like to move further because he had some dreams. He would like to more work more with the architecture of the airplanes. But he said that, well, he is on the important pro- projects uh, with a lot of money that it's impossible that he will move sooner or later somewhere else. But just because we were going so deep and, and 
I, from my management perspective, I had visibility to see something, you know, what kind of pursuits we were uh, doing right now, what kind of possible maybe uh, new businesses are there. And for all those new businesses, for one uh, specifically, uh, we were looking for somebody who can go and be with customer on customer side for some time and start really building architecture for additional new airplane. So I, I immediately mentioned, hey, I have here a person who is really passionate about doing this stuff. And I think he will be a good fit. And about six months later, he is already uh, doing that in, in France on customer side. And just feedback what we are receiving about his passion, about his willingness to really just, uh, you know, go beyond their, his responsibilities is wonderful. Yeah. So it really is, a, a, you know, it just seems so weird how it, people seem to be resistant to the idea that if you truly let somebody do what they want and, ha- and help them tie it to the company's vision and values, the success will follow. So, yes. so on, on an individual basis, and obviously, you know, that, that's one great story, but and I, I know Keith runs up against this all the time, but I don't know how many, I, I don't think there's a day that goes by that one or two people don't contact me about a career, um, not necessarily working for me, but struggling. Hey, I've been looking, if you have any advice, you know, can you redo my resume? Like that's going to make a big difference. Uh, but there's a lot of people that are really struggling. And, you know, some are young, uh, some are in their 20s, some are in their 50s, maybe even 60s, and figuring out what they want to do with the next stage. Um, what What's your first piece of mm-hmm. advice uh, that you could give to them? Um, yes. Because again, I, I so after talking two minutes with them, it's usually a belief system uh, mm-hmm. that is in their way. So what 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 can I offer to them other than referring them to you um, that could help them? My first uh, idea or response would be uh, look for somebody who already who is already doing something what you would like to do, and just go. Talk with that person and, and just be open and honest and tell him, yeah, uh, you are doing something what is kind of my dream and I have this kind of problems. What what what, what is your advice? And and that's uh, you know I I think sometimes it's really ego what is playing the game just to admit that yes I am not perfect and even sometimes if I am responsible leading teams nobody is perfect so right. just. Be able to show your weakness, and people are ready to help. That would yeah. be my first advice. Yeah, and and it's great. Yeah, as I'm talking there, I mean, uh, you know, there's certainly people that their ego doesn't get in their it gets in their way, but then the opposite side of that, there's a lot of people that don't have the confidence. Right. I'm not good enough. That I'm too old. I don't have the money. I'm in the wrong mm-hmm. area. I'm not smart enough. I mean, there's a, a million of these uh, things that go in there. And what you're saying is, is that it. it it is the step going through that is helping people that we all need to be more vulnerable. Yeah. We all realize that we're going to make a mistake. We're going to fail. We may fall, may fall flat on our face, but we, we need to be um, ha- we need to be more vulnerable. And yes. and I'll, uh, something I learned in the in, in last year when I you know decided to become an entrepreneur, right? I, I learned that just by asking, just by reaching out. And, and I'm a sales, I'm type A, like I'm not going to be shy about it, but like just reaching out to people that you want to emulate, those type of people that you, you mentioned, Milo said, were yes. already doing the kind of things that I was passionate about becoming. That was the qualifier for them to truly just help. You know, it's almost like uh, if you're not going to ask, I'm not going to call you and, and ask you what you want to do, right? I, so I, it's I, that I, simple. Well, and I got a great example for you. Uh, and, and you, it's a mutual contact, we know. And he reached out to me. And uh, in fact, I think you met him through me. Okay. Uh, and he reached out to me a week ago and it was like, hey, can you know, we do this? And uh, he said, I, I, I'd love to, I, I want to do a podcast. And he go, can you tell me what's involved? So I went through the pod, I started talking about it. And he goes, ah, I don't want, he says, oh, that's too hard to work. I don't want to do that. I just want to do the podcast. <laughs> right, I don't right. want to do everything you did. So I, I didn't even, it's a very simple thing. It's like, I want to do a podcast. No, nah, it's too hard. I don't I don't want to do all that. Yeah. And then there was like a million excuses why I couldn't do it. it right, like, right. Okay. So then that's not what you want to do, right? Yeah, and, and Keith knows how much time goes into doing oh, the podcast. Yeah. It seems like, hey, we just got on once a week and chat. And, and there's a million yeah, There's a million things. And, yeah. you know, the goal is to, to get the word out. And we all have different ambitions. The goal is to that. be able yeah. to get enough sponsors hey, to hey, pay Milos, people to do it. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> Milos, I don't know if you know this about. 
about me, but you you sort of overshadowed my story. Um, I my first career, I was a dentist, and I walked into my boss and said, um, "I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to go out and do what I love." Um, the, the the advantage I had was my boss was me. <laughs> right, right. So, uh, so is it a mirror to mirror? Like a... Yeah, I couldn't turn it down. Uh, but uh, very similar. And again, that's where you know you you've basically made that your passion. Uh, you know, I'm happy to share the story and I work with people. Um, but people, even at that point, uh, there were uh, I was in my mid 40s when I did that, and uh, there was a whole group of uh, my peers, the other dentists in a similar situation, similar age. Uh, within maybe a five-year span one way or the other and they all said I, I put a group together and it wasn't my goal I didn't want to only I, I really didn't want to work in the in the industry anymore um, but I had a goal and uh, I reached out and, and I was going to do some consulting it was low-hanging fruit and there was about 13 or 14 re- local dentists who signed up for me and it was great it was a good gig great way to start the business and they all said we want to be able to do what you did we want to be able to have the option to leave because we we just we, we don't know if we want to do this the rest of our life. And what I knew is they actually loved doing dentistry. Right. You know, my line in my TED talk, uh, everybody's heard this before, is I loved everything about dentistry, but dentistry. But dentistry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I loved running the business. I loved working with the people. I liked the team building. I liked the leadership. I loved the, working with the community, giving back. I liked all that stuff. But that's who I was, and and dentistry was just a means to an end. Um, but. Um, they, I pulled them all together and it was, you know, they loved doing what they wanted to do. Uh, and basically after a year, it's like, I'm not going to make this transition. Right. Um, because you, you know, what they didn't want to run the business. They just wanted to do the work and you go, I don't have an out for you. I, I can help you make it easier. I could put management systems in place. Uh, but then all the head trash <laughs> came out of why they can't do what I did. Their kids were y- older or younger yeah. than mine. You know, they just purchased something. They have a different ambition. The spouse got in the way. Yeah. There was always a reason so that they couldn't frankly that's a, do it. That's a good place. And, and keeping an eye on the time here, Milos, what what did you – you took a lot of time to develop personally. But what is it that you were able to dial into when you found it harder? You know, maybe you, you woke up one day and it was just hard to make this transition. Yes. Uh, well, what is really important is what kind of people do you have in kind of your close circle. And now I, I will be honest with you, Kate, actually, when we two met, it was kind of that I was looking for somebody who is kind of similar personality like me, and it's going through the similar, similar path. So it was kind of a law of attraction that brought us together. So I, I can really openly share whatever is happening right now. And uh, even if it's not working well, because sometimes... Uh, you know, our ego is always in place, so it's not easy to just admit yeah. that, yes, perfect Miloš, who made a big transition and so on, has kind of struggled in his life. It's, it's not always journey. easy to say. Hey, yes. hey, hey Miloš, I always say, it's like everybody says, wow, we, you know, we, we'd like to do what you do. And I go, yeah, it's like I'm a 24-year overnight success. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. It's kind of like an insult. I was watching uh, so, something with Jason Silver and Tom, Tom Bailu. Or Bilu, Bilu, sorry, Tom. And, uh, and and Tom apologized to Jason Silva because he assumed when he first saw Jason Silva do one of his shocks of awe, one of his speeches, that he was just naturally gifted. And he apologized because he said, dude, I, I did some researching and you busted your ass to get to where you are, you know? And it, and it's it's one of those things where people just forget. Well, when you make it, that's the, that's what an expert, well, there's, there's experts who say they're experts, and then there's people that are really, really good. And everybody just assumes they're a natural, and that's such the exception. Right. And when you talk about it, it takes a lot of work, a lot of practice, a lot of dedication. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I learned that. I mean, I speak all the time, you know that. Yeah. And I'll tell you, one of the hardest things I ever, ever did was the TED Talk. Yeah. I mean, it. you talk about humbling and, and bringing you to your feet and wanting to quit and not do it. And it's like, how can I be this bad? Maybe I should not even be. <laughs> I shouldn't be speaking at all. Then that, and then I heard, um, uh, not uh, Jimmy, it was Jimmy Smith. Yeah. I heard him and he was on one of the talk shows, uh, which I rarely watch, but he was on a talk show. And they go, didn't you just do a TED Talk? And he goes, how was it? That's like really <laughs> exciting. And he goes, it was the hardest thing I ever uh, did. Yeah. Uh, and he talked to me, he says, for months, he yeah. says he's driving down the freeway. He's wherever he was. I'm in the in a bathroom stall. Yep. Um, yep. I'm, I'm waking in the middle of the night, 
rehearsing my presentation yep. and here's somebody that does this for a living. Yeah. And he said it was the hardest thing. So uh, things that we make, you know, when I say we and it's collectively as a human being, the, the things that people make look easy, yep. um, you know, are it, it, there's a lot behind it. Milos, yeah. we're definitely a U.S. based podcast, but we are international. Um, how, and, and here we're talking about how you can get innovation inside the organization by taking care of the people and more, and focusing on on your individual people. How can companies and people track you down and learn more about how you might be able to help? Well, the best way how to contact me is uh, through my emails, milos at miloskovac.org, or just look to my web pages, milo, uh, miloskovac.org. I have some brief information about what I do and uh, contact form. That's and the we'll, and we'll have that in way. the podcast. We'll, yeah. we'll put that yes. in there. Too, or so or, or, to or LinkedIn, yes. LinkedIn, yep. All right, great. Good. And you have, we didn't, we didn't talk a whole lot about it, um, but you got a book, Breakthrough. It's on Amazon. Yes. Uh, can you get, kind of give a quick uh, sixty second summary of of what that is? Obviously, people can buy it buy it up on uh, Amazon. Yes. So uh, this is about stories that really somehow changed our life. And one of my stories, which is there, and I will try to make in sixty seconds. Uh, it was during we were visited uh, one friend with two cars. One I was driving home with one son, my wife with another son. I was driving first. And we, I was talking with the older son all the time. And during uh, entrance to the highway, I just, instead of going home, I was going away from home because I was distracted. <laughs> <laughs> we, we came at home. And, uh, of course, my wife, this uh, younger one, was already at home. And this younger one was just jumping and happy. Yes, mom, I told you so. Daddy is right. I, I was just, what? What is daddy right? And my wife explained, well, you were to the highway, and he told me, Mom, go somehow differently. I would like to be at home first. And <laughs> Mom's response was, well, yes, we can go through town, but that is going through the highway. There is no way that we will be faster at home. And he said, but Daddy is saying, when I believe in something, that is possible that it may happen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know what really happened. Truth is that uh, I was distracted and just moving to opposite direction. So yeah. that that is kind of that I really start thinking: Is it really just you know uh, coincidence, or really he somehow telepathically impacted uh, me and his brother, or <laughs> what really happened? What is power of our mind to impact our environment? Yeah. I love it. Powerful, powerful. Love hey, Milos, it's been it's been a pleasure. Uh, we can obviously talk. There's I got a, a bunch of comments here and a million other questions. So we'll continue the conversation. Hopefully, we can get you back uh, another time uh, on this or a live stream. Yeah, uh, yep. be able to to be able to to kind of work that out. Yep. Uh, but I really appreciate you kicking off uh, the Geek Skeezers Googleization year with the with the bang and uh, very powerful. Um, next week we're we're kind of follow the thing yep. we're talking about disrupt a disruptive mindset Love it. um so that's part of that and, uh, and then we got jason everbrook we got dave, uh, dave bookbinder and then i've uh, been trying to get him on the show for for um well actually since i saw him in june at who's the that? cornerstone Who? uh was joe burton oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Will? he's uh, uh no it's joe burton and it's creating the mindful leaders yeah uh and I again follows very very similar philosophy you might want to check him out uh milos uh as well yeah, uh, very, very might might be helpful. A lot of collaboration. Yeah, on. thanks for coming Thank on you. the show, Milos. Yeah, really appreciate it. it. Hey, uh, Keith, what a, what a way to start. Forty nine more to go. Yeah, what a way to start twenty twenty. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, again, for everybody who is listening today, uh, can't thank you enough. Uh, thank uh, Zor. Uh, for being a sponsor, Success Performance Solutions. Uh, remember um, to get updates on, uh, because I, uh, we don't even have time, enough time to go through everything that's going to happen even this month. Uh, go to googleizationnation.com, googleizationnation.com. Uh, new website's up there. Uh, just sign up. All we need is your email, first name. That's it. Uh, you'll get updates on, on everything that's coming out. We plan to do a couple webinars, too. Um, but you'll you'll keep in touch and uh, anything that we hear or listen. Yeah. We, we... You know, it's interesting, Ira. I think that we're going to see in 2020 a whole lot of merger uh, with merging with this idea of 
human potential and return on investment. I think inside the HR world, there's a lot of things happening in terms of the value of the human capital versus human resources. And I think the guests that we have on the show are going to be absolutely fantastic about it. And we got a fantastic lineup and be able to uh, kind of take them down that road too. And, uh, and uh, again, we've got uh, Joe Burton coming up, yep. uh, you know, Dave uh, Bookbinder, yeah, Dave Bookbinder. Yeah. Just, book. a, just a lot of people. And next week again, uh, we got Charlene yep. uh, Lee talking about the disruptive mindset, yep. uh, what it's going to take to, to grow. So um, a lot of different, experts um and uh, we hope to have everybody back so we got to thank again everybody for listening to the geek skeezers and googleization show remember to go up to googleizationnation.com uh and you'll uh, subscribe all we need is a, an email and a first name you'll be able to uh you, you get all the updates and i can't even keep track of them. so <laughs> i'm losing track of it lots of content doing. that's positive uh, so yeah you'll get a lot of content we're planning to do a few webinars uh, mm -hmm. some freebies get access to my book all that stuff uh, but let us know how we're doing. What, what would you like to hear? What topics are we missing? Uh, do you enjoy what we're doing? Do you, should we change the format a little bit? Uh, if you're interested in being a guest or a sponsor, just share a few thoughts. Uh, you can connect with us on LinkedIn uh, and Twitter uh, and uh, or just through the show website, geekskeezersgoogleization.com. Thanks again to Zor and SPS, uh, Success Performance Solution. Uh, till next week, Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, w4cy.com uh, or you can catch us on any of the podcasts Apple, Apple, iTunes iHeart, Spotify, Google Play you name it, we're probably there um, this is Ira Wolf and Keith Compagna don't let the shift hit your plans